Hello everybody and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video. Today we have a 1v1 between two legends of the 1v1 scene, Mr. Yubaveta, playing Armada today in blue, and has not chosen a factory, versus the Supreme Commander legend, Mr. Zlo. Playing Cortex today in red. Both players very similar OS rankings as you see in the bottom corner here. 47 and 49. So this should be a very close game. And uh, let's zoom on out and have a look at the map. Now we've seen this map a couple of times. This map is called Isidus Crack. And there are multiple spawn positions here. You can choose from. You can choose from a triple mechs in these four locations and uh ten, potentially you could go for an air start on this hill so it could be a 4v4 map it could be a 5v5 map but we're seeing it quite a lot in 1v1s now yubaveta has chosen a different start position here than slow and if we zoom on in uh, we can see some random other spectator here drawing and uh Yubaveta choosing a more forward position here. Now, why is he doing that? Well, the reason for him to do this is quite simple. Um, this gives him a position very close to the front line for his factory to send units out from. This means he's going to be able to get units to wherever the fighting is quicker than his opponent's like. This also gives him pretty, well, relatively safe access to the mexes behind him without having to worry too much. Now this right hand side one is a bit more of a problem. And uh, this is obviously very exposed to here. But if he is able to defend this side, the top side and these back mexes are relatively safe. Um, Ubevator being a martyr here does miss out on the ability to build armed metal extractors, which would do a fairly decent job at defending that flank, but I'm sure he'll just build some LLTs or something. And uh, over here though, in Zlo's base, not a single combat unit has been built yet, which is very ballsy for this early stage. Uh, deciding to actually go for two metal extract, uh, two laser towers rather, instead, and going purely on the vehicle constructors. What that has meant is that his commander has had to go up here in order to actually get these top metal extractors, because a vehicle would not be able to. Uh, I'm up there and so far very very heavy harass here from Mr. Yubavator. Um we have no units really from Zlo at this point it is uh, very easy for Zlo to get harassed at this early stage these uh, LTs have been placed in a very good position though to uh, block any sort of harass and Slow does lose another metal extractor, but with his commander there straight away, he should be able to rebuild it. Yeah, there we go. But we see here that uh, Ubervator doing a lot of containing right now, basically drawing a line there saying, you're not going any further north than that. Starting to get the units in position around here as well. Just happy to kind of keep him in his box. That means that uh, Slow is having to invest a lot in uh, the laser towers that we see here. And this does also give Yubaveta basically free reign over the entire map. Um, because right now you can see he's not really worried about defending these metal points. He is just expanding and that is it. There are some units back here though. Which this one pawn is going to deal with. Does he have vision and know that they're there? No, he does not. Or oh, an already energy converter as well. Is this scout coming in? No. He will manage to catch this engineer though. Which realistically probably won't cause Yubaveta too much of a problem. Probably just get a resbot to deal with that. Those scouts are going to get taken out pretty quickly. Meanwhile, as we zoom on over here, 
we can see containment is a little bit broken now with a big gap here but this is a substantial force to be just left right outside where slow's commander is and this is causing slow to invest heavily into llts right at the offset of his base here he's not even managed to claim this you know additional starting metal point um which is pretty bad for him um he's also got a pounder queued up which will be very very efficient versus these uh pawns here but um yeah not looking good for Zlo so far now of course vehicles do cost more metal than uh bots so it is somewhat predictable that Ubervator would have more units right now just due to the fact that he's able to build more with the metal that he's got. But unfortunately, Slow has not really been able to, well, really build anything. He's currently got no build power on the factory. He's desperately short on energy at the moment. He needs more energy, which he is trying to fix. But Pounders are obviously very good against pawns and such, but they are very slow. And you can just see when we zoom out how far out of the map Ubervator's expanded to. It is like that. And still only there. And slows that. So Ubervator in the lead at this stage of the game. However, you know, having the right units to counter your opponent uh, can add up quite a bit. Ubervator as well in the back here now just uh re in that construction bot and getting some early well some uh, say early scouting it's not really early scouting at this stage of the game getting some scouts out here just trying to find out where his opponent is though is i would say that slow may be over investing in build power right now um he does need to spread out yes but he's got what, two here building wind he's got another guy here building energy converters one here building construction turrets another here assisting the factory with another guy being built this one over here just trying to build expansion and this one over here slowly like pushing out but he's got no units to defend any of these guys and his commander also by pushing down the bottom here this does mean that yes his commander is, a, is in a position to help stop any push from this bottom side right but this also means that his commander is so far away from his base that if he has to defend the base he's basically screwed because he doesn't really have any units at the moment um also this is like a key area here where you can get pushed from both lanes and he knows his opponent has a lot of forces here so having your commander push maybe along here would have been better um but yeah what we do see right now though is ubervator preparing a bombing run he already has three bombers fourth one and he's also transitioning to vehicles this makes sense from Ubervator because he has a lot of metal right now and bots don't use a lot of metal. So transitioning over to a bit more stronger units here in order to break through uh, all of those massive amount of laser towers that Zlo has made. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zlo preparing a bombing run himself. Uh, which clearly great minds think alike as they're both doing the same thing. The only issue is... Zlow is a little bit behind on that front. He does see air coming. Desperately tries to get some fighters out. I don't think this is going to be quick enough. Does manage to get a air defense turret up. These bombers will manage to get a bombing run off. Oh, oh, they didn't bomb. The target wasn't set correctly. The bombers didn't actually drop their bombs. Oh, that's massively disappointing. Only a single bomber manages to get its bombs off before every single one of them gets shot down. That is a big fumble there by Ubervator. 
Here come another set of bombers coming in from Zlow. They will get their bombs off. And those bombers will be no more. But that is a lot more damage inflicted by Zlow there than uh, Yubivator managed to pull off. Now, I'd be somewhat not surprised to see both players just now instantly reclaim their air labs. But, yeah, we got a good actual push. I say push. It's just made up of scouts and two incisors. Uh, but, yeah, good point. Greed Punishment Squad. This is uh, an interesting little uh, bit up here. Just kind of there to just stop you expanding. But, you know, a single couple of gunships will easily deal with that and that is exactly what Ubervator is building now bunch of gunships their plan is probably to go around grab any of these exposed metal extractors here there's no defense on those at all you can quite easily start taking those down um, another scout pushing through on the bottom here may managing to get a metal extractor And this is uh, well played by um, Ubervator at the moment. Using air constructors here to get the top of the hill metal extractors. And that's done some pretty good work for him there. It's like two metal extractors that are not going to get harassed at all all game. And build, being able to build like, you know, radars, anti-air in that corner is going to just make that corner really super safe for him. This is a very, very heavy investment into uh, laser towers. Uh, don't quite know why he's built so many laser turrets right there. But, you know. And the air fight definitely lost by Slow. And as you see here, he's actually already reclaimed his air lab. Surprisingly, Ubervator hasn't. Um, it makes sense for Slow to keep the air lab for shurikens, but... He would have to win air to do that, which currently is not. The gunship's doing a fairly decent job here at providing some little form of harass, getting some of these metal extractors. But the thing that's more important is probably this tank push in the middle. The classic Armada staple of Stouts and Janices here. Doing a fairly good job at providing some long-range harass against these brutes. What is the shoot? Oh, that guy's trying to shoot a little bit. That, got, that construction vehicle's gone. These expansion mexes will also be taken out very quickly. But they weren't able to get these construction bots. Say so construction bot construction vehicles. Um, so... This is quite a lot of uh, build power to be just left up here. But he's about to get surrounded by a bunch of grunts. He needs some form of defense there. He does have a few units, but it's nowhere near enough. And is Lowe going to try and build stuff with them? No, actually just running away, which is somewhat surprising. And this is a good use of the bot lab here. So rather than, uh, you know, building the missile trucks uh, out of the vehicle lab, what uh, Zlow has actually done is he's built the bot lab and he's just building these trashes out of the bot lab. And the intention here is just to basically have a separate lab that's just producing uh, anti-air. Not only that, but it also then gives him access to the um, res bots. And uh, res bots will probably play quite a key role here as we've got more forces moving down here but probably the more important fight for us to look at is the lack of units here to defend this one not only that but dangerous dangerous thing here about to be for slow as his commander has zero air defense and a huge bunch of gunships are coming flying over Ubervator does not know. That would probably be enough gunships there to take out Slow's commander. 
was like very very fortunate very fortunate that that they did not spot his commander otherwise that would have been game over for slow he desperately needs to build uh some more anti-air he is bringing trashes down here as you can see to defend his commander but he is severely lacking on main forces right now especially in this middle section he's trying to rectify that but this is one thing that's really difficult about 1v1 on this map the map is humongous and trying to cover what would normally be, you know, four people's individual lanes takes a lot of, uh, you know, mental gymnastics to, uh, you know, concentrate on every single avenue. And quite often what you'll see in these 1v1s is that most players will probably just focus on like these two middle lanes and then completely ignore uh, the sides. Uh, but these two players focus him basically in every single location. Um, constantly forcing his opponent to bounce back and forth. Uh, what we do see now though is a transition over to Tech 2 from Ubervator. Ubervator already with a Tech 2 a construction vehicle and even some consoles out. And that will do quite an efficient job at dealing with stuff from long range. These Mausers are pretty good. Um, he is investing in anti-air, which is surprising. Uh, he must think that his opponent has some form of air. Uh, slow right now, though, with a, a large amount of idle constructors. And uh, mine layer should work versus mines. I can't see where there is one right now. Uh, they should have a attack. You just attack ground with them, I believe. And they have like a little Juno gun. But this is where the slow is going to start a struggle. Not only are there mines defending these Mausers, but there is, uh, well a tech 2 bull already behind it and these mouses are going to do significant damage and that front line is basically gone now and we basically needs slow here to transition over to tech 2 himself he's still with a massive energy surplus right now wind is basically dead which is one of the reasons but so many construction bots uh, vehicles just idle right now a lot of build power going to waste we can see that on the stats here army value is somewhat in advantage to slow right now and that would have been caused by the uh, time between transition into tech 2 uh, all that time that uh, Zlo has managed to build up forces whilst uh, his opponent had to put the metal into the Tech 2 lab. But this is forcing Zlo back further and further. And he means to make a decision what he's going to do. Is he just going to keep falling back or is he going to go in? Down the bottom here, he doesn't really have much. Mostly anti-air and he's just building a field of laser towers. In the middle again, just a field of laser towers. Just keeps falling back his plan is maybe to try and surround them if they came for further forward but slow there planning the surround Ubervate us very slow to react and he will manage to get these Mausers not only that he is very aware now that tech 2 exists and the resbots are already there and with that comes a big push by Slow. And looks like he's changed his mind. He's like, nope. Fuck that, I'm out of here. And bulls will absolutely tear brutes to shreds. But more Tech 2 now pushing down on this bottom side. And that massive field of LLTs is not going to really do much for Slow against long-range artillery. 
The very smart move of here of resurrecting these mouses will help him out a little bit, but they are very squishy. And they are only just outside the range. Oh, no, but he's pulled them into the range. Ah, there goes that. Mouser. But you can see here on the mini map that all of this pressure by Slow being applied on this north side. This has forced all those units that were defending the middle to go top. And meanwhile, applying pressure in the middle here, Slow trying to dictate where his opponent is sending his forces. He wants to keep his opponent pressured and sending forces into the middle here rather than defending the northern flank. Unfortunately, he's not able to apply enough pressure. And we see three bulls here starting to head up the top. Oh, a lot of res bots get caught in that explosion. So also, unfortunately here, not microing his forces effectively. And we can see just how many shots are being wasted by these brutes along the north here. As they just continuously hit wrecks and take free damage from the uh, beamers and stuff. Meanwhile, this force in the middle does manage to get a decent way in. But there are so many bulls here that... They are not going to survive for much longer. The Resbot's trying to desperately resurrect stuff. I think Slow is basically relying purely on this push along the north. He needs to make a decent breakthrough here. Otherwise, it's pretty much game over for him. This will be way too much metal just leaving your opponent's base. Question is, how much damage can Slow inflict? Slow... Not paying attention. Leaves his forces idle. He could have pushed in and got a lot of damage there. But no, pulling back instead. What Slow might be doing right now is just trying to buy time for these resbots to wear their magic in the back. Get more and more forces on his side. Not only that, but he is resurrecting some of these forces in the middle. Great play by Ubervator there. Focusing the resbots. But now... The tide is turning. Slow managing to completely secure all reclaim fields. And this is pushing Ubervator right back. He's not redirecting any of these forces along the bottom. Which now he can't because Slow is building Tech 1 tanks to push along the bottom line as well. And Ubervator in a very strong position to begin with is just getting absolutely swarmed on all sides and this is exactly what we were speaking about having to focus on so many different locations at once you only have so much micro time in your head to be you know focusing on all of these sides and slow just playing on that right now and completely overwhelming his opponent with locations that he needs to pay attention to and we can see right now Ubervator's cursor was here these tanks pushing through in the middle on the bottom as well, causing another avenue to think about. But these brutes managed to get right in and cause so much damage. And this is an example here where you can see Slow is just constantly po uh, focused Tech 1 out. He hasn't built Tech 2 lab, even though his opponent's gone Tech 2. The idea is he's just completely overwhelming Ubervator with the amount of units that are here and Ubervator just can't keep up. His base is being surrounded on all sides. If he could get Tech 2 defenses up and running that would make a significant impact to this. Unfortunately they're not being built in the right place and Ubervator right now just needs units. He's trying to get a D-gun off of his commander there, but meanwhile on the front line, you can see he does manage to get two point defenses up there, which will do a good job, but commander exposed. Cloak is off. Ubervator only now just realizing, already down to 70% health. He does not have the energy to maintain a cloak right now. And huge amount of metal left on the field right now. Slow doing an amazing job at just surrounding any of these like improvements that Ubervator has made and locations and now just slowly clearing them up off the map. 
not only that, you see Zlo here with a super forward vehicle lab, uh, otherwise known as, you know, in uh, Bath as a proxy lab. Built really far forward, pumping out just tanks, planning to sheer overwhelm his opponent. And so far, that is working tremendously. Look how much slow metal has right now. 2,600 metal. He's taken most of the map. Not only that, but then he's reclaiming what he can't grab. And although Gunship's doing a very good job along this top line here, that area will get defended very effectively. It's just This is going to be very difficult for Ubervate to come back from. If he could get all of this rezzed, then, you know, he maybe stands a chance. Tech 2 defenses will do a very good job at dealing with all of that Tech 1, but can he evade the swarm? That's the question. And right now, Slow just doing an amazing job at completely overwhelming Ubervata. You have a uh, somewhat limited now. If it's like if he was Cortex, he could go Shurikens, right? Uh, but with his current options, Bulls still a very good choice. He doesn't have the energy for Starlights, so that's pointless. Um, he could maybe build some pawns out of the uh, bot lab here. Purely to just add some unit mass to his groups so that his opponents are not hitting the balls and, you know, they're hitting the, the pawns instead first. Uh, but other than that, Ubervate are putting everything he possibly can into just getting more and more balls out. But this will be the nail in the coffin. Look at this bombing run. Huge damage. Fusion goes up. Some of these bombers may get another run. Will it be enough to take out that fusion, though? Unfortunately not. But that was a lot of damage. Uh, oh, almost got the construction turret there. And Slow just doing an immense amount of pressure here. Notice he's still not transitioned to Tech 2. Just purely focusing everything on Tech 1 pressuring Ubervator's base, but we have seen this before where the, the person doesn't transition to Tech 2. They stay Tier 1, and the person that's Tech 2 is able to just hunker down and ends up pulling it back. So, Slow in a very good position, but at some point he will have to transition to Tech 2. Especially if we see a Pulsar get built here. This is going to be very difficult for Slow to push in. Um, saying that, unless he builds just like a bunch of scouts to uh, take the damage for him. But we can see all of the economy stats are in favor of Ubervator right now, even though he only owns a small, tiny amount of the map. This just shows how strong Tech 2 economy is. Very strong push here, though, from Ubervator, trying to just take back some territory from Zlow. And this is what I said the other day about like trying to dictate the game to your opponent rather than just following their flow. Sending a small amount of group of forces out just purely to like take some aggression off at a different location but still needing to defend very heavily here. Ubervator's calm trying to close in on these tanks over here but not going to make it in time to get a D-gun off. Army value, though, has now switched over to advantage Ubervator. And that did sound like a starlight just then. Yep. One starlight built. And this is where the tech one's going to start running into problems, but... That doesn't matter. Because we have a Tech 2 transition here from Zlow. And now with Zlow able to control such a huge amount of the map. This will uh, do a pretty good job at putting the nail in the coffin of Ubervator. The question is, is how long is it going to take for Ubervator to get a substantial force enough 
where he's able to push back on slow. Kind of looks like he might already have that T2 force. Look how quickly these Tech 1 tanks over here are dying to this mass of bulls. Another huge bomber force though has been built in this bottom corner. A potential dangerous move here from Slow. This tank force over here pushing to try and stop this force from Slow, but if Slow was smart, he might be able to sandwich this tank force in between both of his massive armies of bulls. Uh, not bulls, uh, stouts, brutes. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like that's not been the case. Well, fortunately for you, Bevator, that is. And Slow now manages to lose a huge amount of tanks with not really able to establish too much of uh, damage there. 10k metal just left right outside of Ubivator's <laughs> base. That's a bit of a tongue twister when you say it quickly. Ah, uh, but here comes some shurikens. There are fighters around, but those shurikens won't last very long. EMP is not really effective now due to how many bombers uh, fighters there are, but shurikens are a lot cheaper to build than uh, fighters, so doesn't really really bother him that much. And I'm really surprised Ubervator has been able to hold out this long, to be honest with you. He's in a pretty strong position. He's got a lot of Tech 2 now on the field. Not only that, but the huge amount of reclaim that's happened has meant that he's got a lot of potential units he can uh, resurrect. The battle does seem to be now tilting back to Ubervator's side. So was not able to get that nail in the coffin quick enough, and that is causing massive problems. This tank force is also going to get destroyed before it's able to really accomplish too much. And this should be a potential candidate here for self-destruct. But it does look like his attention is over here, Slow. Slow's commander in a pretty dangerous position right now. As he's building a bunch of energy converters right next to where a bunch of bulls are. Very, very dangerous. Those economy is doing pretty well right now, though. He has an issue with build power. Not able to pump out enough build power on factories. That's because look how much idle he's got. He's got all of these seven idle constructions. Construction vehicles not assisting anything. That's a big waste there. A big, big waste. Uh, interesting bombing run there. Trying to just destroy some of the wrecks. Hoping the resbots were there. But unfortunately, no. It's very slow push along the top here from uh, Slow. Not really going to be able to accomplish too much. It wouldn't surprise me if we maybe see... I don't know, it's difficult to say. So right now, with the amount of metal that Slow's got, he could potentially transition over to Tech 3. It would be risky. But if he could get enough Shivas up, it would work. Oh, Slow calling a GG. Okay. I would not have called that a GG. Slow very close to winning there. Bit disappointing ending, unfortunately. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. It just shows that it's not all over if your opponent's tech 2 and you're not tech 1. Because you can make a difference. Unfortunately, Slow not able to pull it off at the end there. But it was very, very touch and go. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I'll see you guys next time.